So you just created a new Kanban board, but after a few days, your board's backlog is starting to get a little long. Pretty soon you find yourself having to scroll for a while just to find your issues. Maybe you're getting overwhelmed by just the sheer amount of issues that are showing up in that backlog column, and it's really, really hard to find things. I'm gonna show you how to fix this problem and how to make your usage of your Kanban board just a little bit more efficient and hopefully, fingers crossed, restore a little bit of sanity back into your life. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing, drop a like if you get value out of this video, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into today's video. So here we are inside of a Kanban style project. Now, obviously I have named it a Kanban style project, but you might not be too aware if you're actually in a Kanban style. Now there's two key indicators that will tell you if you're inside of a Kanban style. Indicator number one is on the left-hand side, this is gonna say Kanban board. If here it says active sprint board, then you are indeed not in a Kanban style. You're actually in a scrum one. And what I'm about to tell you will not apply. So just make sure you smash that like button to support the channel and go on to the next video. But assuming you are in a Kanban, let me give you the other indicator. Okay, so the other indicator for you is that you will see the word backlog here and select it for development. This is the default configuration for a Kanban style. If you were in a Scrum style, you wouldn't have backlog, you wouldn't have selected for development, and instead it would say to do. Because you don't see to do, and you instead you see backlog and selected for development, we are 100% assured that we are inside of a Kanban style because it says Kanban on the left and we have those two statuses. So make sure you double check because what I'm about to show you today applies only for Kanban style projects. How do we clean this up? What we're going to do, the intent of today's video is to take this column, this backlog column, and basically hide it. We want to shove it over to the side, and shove might be a strong word, but we basically want to hide it. Let me tell you why this is important. Because when you have just the out of the box configuration, your backlog column, as your team adds and creates more and more and more issues, that backlog is gonna get pretty big. And unless you work with the super, super awesome team that can like push out 50 issues out at a day, that backlog is just gonna get pretty long. Pretty soon you're gonna have two, four, 600 issues and you're gonna be scrolling for a while just to find things that are important. And so it can get very overwhelming and very messy to manage and organize your backlog when it's all just thrown out there in this particular view. But thankfully, the fine folks over at Atlassian, they created a feature that allows us to hide that backlog and give it a dedicated backlog. Now, full spoiler, this is going to start and look and feel like a traditional scrum board that, by the way, out of the box, already contains that backlog functionality enabled. But don't worry. I'm gonna show you how to do it in your Kanban board too. If you go to your Kanban board, you will come over here to the right-hand side. You're gonna click on these ellipses and you're gonna click on board settings. From there, you may be in general or you may land in columns. It's not really sure which one you're in, but at the end of the day, you wanna make sure you end up in columns because in order to do what I'm about to teach you, you have to do this inside of columns. Now, you're gonna redirect your attention to this middle section of the screen you'll notice that you have this column called backlog with the status of backlog. Now this is exactly the way it comes out of the box. So what we're going to do is really, really easy and it's gonna give you an infinite amount of sanity back to you. And so let me show you how to do this. So all you need to do is grab this rectangle here, this is backlog, and we're gonna drag it over here to the left where it says Kanban backlog. Now even at last, it's a little friendly with this. They tell us, let me move this back out. They tell us that this Kanban backlog is, is your board getting a little full? If it is, with the Kanban backlog, you can plan your team's work in a dedicated space away from the board. And now, before we end this video, I'm gonna show you why this is really, really important, okay? Because now that we've done that, now that we've basically enabled that Kanban backlog, our backlog column has disappeared, which is really, really good, because now what's left is the work that your team needs to focus on. You've selected this work for development on purpose. You methodically have gone into Jira and said, this is the work my team's gonna work on and we wanna focus on this work. Very similar to a sprint minus the dates. 
And so this is perfect for your team because now you're streamlined. Your efficiency is going to start going up because now you don't have all this extra clutter to kind of mess with your team. Now you're just seeing the stuff that your team needs to work on. But we now have a backlog to deal with. And so this backlog, while it looks very, very clean because it's such a bad example, yours may have hundreds and hundreds of different issues. And what you can do in this backlog now is you can reprioritize the work here. So you can move things up and down or you can right click on something and move it to the top of the backlog. Your goal or your objective should be to order or what Jira calls rank these issues in the backlog section. Because when we do this, and again, this is really a bad example because I only have three issues, but ideally you would have hundreds of issues here. And by reordering them, you can now establish a priority so that your team, when it comes time to figuring out what they're going to commit to, now has a clear ordered list of the work that they want to tackle on next. And so all your team needs to do when it comes time to planning their next iteration of work, their next week's worth of work, they all they need to do is drag and drop up there or right click and click on selected for development. When you do that, and only when you do that, do those issues then show up in your board. Now, one key thing that I want to basically highlight in case you might not know is what we just did from moving an issue from the backlog to selected for development is a transition change. The status used to be backlog and now the status equals selected for development. Let me prove it to you. So when I take this story, you'll see that this says backlog. When I move it to selected for development, after a second or two, this will update to selected for development. This is intentional. This is how Kanban works. But fundamentally, if you're used to using a scrum style board, this is not how scrum works. When you take an item from your backlog in a scrum project and you move it into a sprint, you're not transitioning the issue. You're merely just adding a value to the sprint field, which then makes it show up in your active sprint. So very, very key for you to realize that there's a very, very, very key indicator of how these two methodologies fundamentally under the hood work in a very different way. But anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. Once you make that change, once you add that backlog, your board's going to be a whole lot cleaner. Now in your backlog, you can go and prioritize, organize, rank your work. And then when you're ready and only when you're ready, can you now move that issue to select it for development, which will then show up in your board, which now enables your team to make the progress and visualize your work in progress. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you found value of this video, please make sure you smash that like button. Subscribe if you made it this far and you're still not subscribed. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. See you in the next one. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.